All right, number 33 from the GRE subject math practice test. Uh, what is the 19th derivative of this thing? So let's call this maybe f of x. What's f 19 primes of x? Uh, that seems like a lot of work. Right, if they're going to ask you some huge number like this, they don't actually want you to calculate that. They want you to start to recognize a pattern, figure out what's going on, and then determine what that answer is. So let's start just figuring out the first derivative, f prime of x. Uh, how do you want to do this? You want to use the quotient rule or the product rule? I'm partial to the product rule, so I'm going to call this x minus 1 times e to the negative x power. And then I'm like, eh, I don't really like that either. Although, yeah, I like that well enough. You could distribute through, but you'd still have a product rule in this from this first term, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, so the derivative, product rule, f prime, so the derivative of this thing is just 1, times g, which would be e to the negative x power, plus g prime, so the derivative of this guy, well, i got to use the chain rule, and I get minus e to the minus x, uh, times, leave this guy alone, x minus 1. And you could leave it like this, but what you'll notice are all of these answers are something times e to the negative x power. Uh, so maybe I should factor out an e to the negative x power here. Well, then I would have a 1 here minus this x minus 1 here. In other words, I would have uh, a negative x and 1 minus negative 1, so I'd end up with 2. e to the negative x times 2 minus x. So there's the first derivative. Uh, what's the second derivative? g prime of, whoops, not g prime, f double prime of x. Ah, lost a parenthesis. Well, it's red now. I hope you don't care. f double prime of x. Well, let's take the derivative of this form. This seems like this would be the easiest one. Uh, wait a minute. This thing's a hell of a lot like this thing right here. You know what? Maybe I'll even take this one step further. This is equal to negative 1 times e to the negative x times x minus 2. And you're like, why did you do that? Well, all of a sudden, this looks a hell of a lot like this. right? I got this extra negative 1, which I can deal with that. Um, but otherwise, it's identical to this. It's just my constant changes from a negative 1 to a negative 2, or from a 1 to a 2 if you're thinking subtraction. Uh, so when I take the derivative, I could go through these exact same steps, or I could be like, well, I'm going to have this negative 1, because that's just a constant. I'll leave that alone. And then that's going to get multiplied by exactly this, except, well, let's go through and do the steps one more time. You could probably recognize a pattern at this stage, but I'm going to go through and do the steps one more time. So I'm going to take the derivative of, it doesn't matter which line, let's say this line. f prime is negative e to the negative x times g, which is 2 minus x, plus g prime. Uh, the derivative of 2 minus x is just negative 1 times f, which is e to the negative x. Uh, and if I factor out an e to the negative x, what I have left is negative 2 minus x minus 1. So I have e to the negative x times, let's see, my x turns positive. I got minus 2 minus 1 more. I got minus 3. Okay, so let's regroup here. Uh, my original function was x minus 1 times e to the negative x. Then the first derivative was x minus 2 times e to the negative x. Oh, and it was negative. And then my second derivative was e to the, was x minus 3 times e to the negative x. And now I'm back to positive. So first observation, it appears that the sign is changing each time, positive, negative, positive, and so forth. So in any even power, I get a positive. So I'm looking for the 19th derivative, f, let me switch color, the 19th derivative of x. Well, it's odd, so I'm going to have that negative 1. Uh, and then I'm going to have an e to the x, because I always have an e to the x in these guys. Uh, and let's see, in the first derivative is x minus 2. In the second derivative is x minus 3. In the 19th derivative, I'm feeling like x minus 20 is probably what's going to end up happening. So I get this. And you stare over here, and you're like, oh, I don't see that. Well, don't worry about it. None of these have a negative 1 pulled out in front. So take the negative 1 and distribute it in. And you get e to the negative x times, instead of x minus 20, 20 minus x. And if you come looking over here, you'll probably find that somewhere. Is this this lot? Nope. This guy, see? There's the 20 minus x, and there's the e to the negative x. Um, so you can do as many of these steps as, as you want. 
Uh, but really, after you do two, you don't have to do any more because this is really three iterations. This was the original function, and its derivative didn't change except for the sign change, and I subtracted one from this constant. So since this is the same as this, based on the way that derivative rules work, that same change is going to continue to happen. I'm going to get an extra negative one each time, so it'll alternate between negative and positive. And this value is going to subtract. This is going to decrease by one each time. So that ends up being the answer.